Here's what atheists don't understand. Let's say our life begins from a single cell. I don't think that's the case because I believe in the Genesis account of creation, meaning human in our current form have no evolutionary ancestor. So if life begins from that single cell, that cell requires prior fine tune in order for it to work perfectly. A cell is so complex that even the high level of technology today cannot produce one. No effort to create an artificial cell has ever met with, with success. That means a cell requires a designer, and this designer is God. But let's hear what St Stephen Meyer have to say. Take a look. But do you believe, like I said, originally there's just one single solitary cell that's created? Well, right. I, uh, presumably, that's where... Is that what you think? I, I, I do think there was a, a, an original cell that was created. Because the theory of evolution says the journey from single cell to the full complexity of life on Earth and so on happened by random trial and error. But your position, I think, is that it's so complicated, this original single cell, so complex for all the reasons you've just articulated, that that's just simply not feasible, that it would be just random trial and error. It had to be the creation of some superior entity. Right. Am I, is that right? Well, again, there's two contexts. There's the how do you get to the first cell, and then how do you get from the first cell to everything right. else? Let's just take the origin of the so first you cell. So you think the creator of the universe is God? I do. And then out of the universe comes the creation of a single cell, which again is God. Right. Um, here's the evidence, though, that when, when we see information in a, a, a digital or alphabetic or typographic form, and this is what we actually see in the DNA. Mm -hmm. When Francis Crick elucidated what he called the sequence hypothesis in the late 1950s, he realized that the four subunits along the interior of the DNA um, are functioning like alphabetic characters in a written text or, or digital characters in a section of software. What we know from experience is that whenever we say information of that sort, mm -hmm. it always comes from a mind. Bill Gates, our local hero, has said that DNA is like a software program but much more complex than any we've ever devised. Richard Dawkins has acknowledged that it functions like a machine code. Mm. Well, what we know is that software comes from a programmer. And in fact, whenever we see information of that kind, whether it's in a software program or a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book, it always arises from a mind, not a material process. So the, the discovery of information at the foundation of life and even the simplest living cell, I argue, is decisive evidence of the activity of a designing mind in the origin of life. What is the Goldilocks zone? Another uh, of your big bedrocks of your book. Well, uh, this is something, this one way that the physicists refer to something that they call the fine tuning of, uh, of the universe, or sometimes they talk about it, the anthropic fine tuning. Mm -hmm. The idea is that the most fundamental parameters of physics uh, fall within very narrow ranges or tolerances outside of which we have discovered life would not be possible. Even basic chemistry would not be possible. So the force responsible for the expansion of the universe uh, called the cosmological constant is uh, fine-tuned an accepted value is to one part in 10 to the 90th power. So a smidge faster or slower in that expansion and you either get a heat death of the universe or you get a big crunch, a great black hole. In either case, life is not possible. And that's just one of many parameters that fall within that kind of a sweet spot. So sometimes the, the physicists do talk about uh, are living in a Goldilocks universe. Uh, Luke Barnes has written a wonderful book about the fine tuning of physicists who also did his PhD at Cambridge has written a book called The Fortunate Universe. Mm -hmm. So these types of terms are now making their way into physics because physicists did not expect that life would depend upon such an exquisitely and, and improbably uh, arranged set of, of basic parameters. But there we have it. They did, this is what they found. But again, that comes back to the idea of a designer of all this. Well, one of the, one of the scientists who first discovered these fine tuning parameters was uh, Fred Hoyle. Mm -hmm. And Hoyle was a, a pretty aggressive scientific atheist. He opposed the Big Bang and even gave the Big Bang its name, the Big Bang, as a kind of pejorative to, 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 uh, to make fun of the, the, the concept. But after he discovered some of these fine-tuning parameters, he had a shift in, in his philosophical perspective, in his worldview. And he was later quoted as saying that um, a common sense interpretation of the data, the fine tuning data, suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics and chemistry to make life possible. And I would say I, lo I love the way the monkeys always make it into the origins <laughs> discussion, even if it's in physics. It always goes back to yeah, monkeys. Uh, always um, monkeys, either at a typewriter or something. Yeah. There are other uh, scientific hypotheses that don't use God as an explanation for all this. One is the 
simulation matrix theory, which Elon Musk talks about, uh, or the idea of a multiverse. And when I had Neil deGrasse Tyson on, the astrophysicist, yeah. he said this. Look, if you're an atheist watching this video, I encourage you to really look at all creation and the universe objectively and see how everything is finely tuned in order, in order for it to work, in order for life to be possible. Think of it like a piano or a guitar or a drum. This instrument has to be fine-tuned by someone with a mind for the sound to be good. Life is vastly more complex than some musical instrument. Don't you think that requires a mind? I'll let you answer that question yourself. May God bless you. Take care.